There we go. Find it in and begin deciphering. Right on time. Hello, madam. I wish to take this and rest here at your humble inn. We could use a place to stay. Any rooms open? Yep. Just finished cleaning, in fact. You can help yourself to that room there. Yeah, I'm gonna have my face cam on too. All right, time to start deciphering this scroll. Let's wait somewhere outside so Grim can concentrate. Um, do you think maybe I could stay and watch? I really do want to study the ancient tongue. I promise I'll be quiet and not get in your way, teacher. What did you just say, child? Uh, that I'd be quiet and... No, what did you call me? Teacher? You said you didn't want to be called ma'am, so I thought maybe that'd work. Yes. Satisfactory. All right. I'll teach you how to read ancient Averost. Thank you so much, teacher. We'll leave you two alone then. Let us know if anything comes up. All right. Okay. So right now it's just me. I'm also joined. Hi, right, perfect lens. I'm joined on commentary by my grandma. She's watching American Ninja Warrior. Still gotta go there, son. There's people just waiting in their respective areas. Alright. Can't grab that. I'm gonna do these side ones first. I just need to know where they are. That kid's up there. Listen, I don't know what they told you in the soul, but our village has its own tradition. This village is under the divine protection of the Empyrean Amenoch. For unbroken centuries, a line of his priestesses has guided us. They're tasked with performing the sacred rites of worship. And sometimes, they even deliver us his words and will. And there's still a priestess today? Of course. And her daughter is training to become our next priestess. Although, I sometimes feel they push themselves too hard. Both mother and daughter are giving their all for Haria. But the Abbey doesn't care about any of that. And they stole our temple from us. By force? An exorcist named Teresa came and heard us out. But from the very beginning, she always intended on taking our temple. Her words may have been kind, but that doesn't change the fact that she demanded that we worship her god, Enomenat. In all the years we've worshipped Amenoch, not once did we ever try to force others to adopt our beliefs. Why haven't I seen this priest as she's talking about? Who knows, Velvet? Who knows? Go take a stroll around here. Okay. Do you okay. plan on just giving up? Palamedes is Amenoch's temple. The priestess isn't the only one whose job it is to protect that temple. It's the duty of everyone born in this village. Why did the Abbey need Amenoch's temple badly enough to risk causing this much unrest? But how will we protect our village from the demons if the Abbey abandons us? Besides, we won't be able to do business with the people of the Sultan anymore. Our faith in Amenoch has nothing to do with the demons. When the priestess gets back, I'm going with her to protest. The demon blight changed everything. Will we never be able to return to the way things were? The way things were. All right. I'm not going to visit the weapon shop right now. It should be all right. So she digs being called teacher. Well played, Lafayette. said. She wasn't so fond of ma'am. So I guess he figured he needed an alternative. You can tell how badly he wanted to help her with the language he work. I think our Moloch boy's finally finding himself. So it would seem. What connection do you think there is between the violent demon Teresa mentioned and this village? Couldn't tell you. Could there have been a demon blight breakout here? This village doesn't look like it's been attacked, but... Whatever it is. If it keeps the Abbey's eyes off us for once, that's good enough for me. 
You feel you will use anything and everything towards your own aims, won't you? Yep, and that includes you. As I'm sure you've noticed. Hmm, that's actually a nerve over here. Sounds like deciphering the text might take some time. We should be prepared to wait it out for a while. Hopefully it'll all be worth it in the end. I hope so too, but ancient Avarost is complex. It's not just a matter of knowing the grammar and vocabulary. Oh? Then how exactly do you read it? I'm not sure about the specifics myself, but from what I understand, you kind of have to intuit a lot of it. A language based on guesswork? Thanks, old dead people. You're officially the worst. And there's look, there's this little crab here that's just chilling on the, the thing. Oh, there's another crab over here. All right. I thought it was just the one. We can't leave there yet. Can I talk to Magalu from? Nope. Got some stuff over here. Local religions. The Abbey sure knows how to oppress the populace. I'd imagine that comes part and parcel with spreading the good word. Other gods would only get in the way. From what we overheard, it sounds like they've taken over Amenoch's temple, Polymedes, to use as their base of operations. Sealing it off would be provocative enough. But straight up taking it over? Not a lot of so-called reason to that. Unless... Do you think they need it for some other purpose? Shrug. <sighs> oh, ancient Avarost. You have the obstinacy of a spurned lover who refuses to move on. Even for you, teacher? It's this one crucial line. I can't wrap my head around it. Well, from what you've taught me so far, it looks like it says Sa Popo Mucho Sancho. Correct, but if you merely translate it word for word, it ends up saying the parent hates tomatoes, the child eggplants. I doubt those have much to do with the nominat. <laughs> yeah. Their grammar is nothing like ours. Sometimes you have to reorder the words, and even then the meaning can require leaps of logic and flashes of intuition. Reordering? So like, San San, Pocho Pocho, Pocho Musan, Pocho Musan. Can you read it that way? Pocho Musan. Now, where did you get that from? These words are lined up, like they repeat. And when I read this part that same way, it just felt right. Pocho Musan. Hmm. If that's repeated here, then the passage turns into... The Nameless Empyrean. Empyrean! Ho oh, ho, that has to refer to Innominat. I think we're on to something. All right, so if we apply this rule here, then... Hmm, hmm. It would seem to be a book of children's counting songs. It's not about Innominat? What matters is what the song says, child. And I think you will be very interested in the words. I wonder if they've made any progress yet. Shall we go check on them? Oh, it's right here, like right to the left. Okay. Well, any results? 
Yes. Well, thanks to the boy here. As it turns out, he has quite the knack for languages. <laughs> Only because I've got the best teacher. Careful, honey tongue. You'll give this old girl ideas. <laughs> now, child, I'm sure oh. they're curious about the song we unearthed. Why don't you read it aloud? Yes, teacher. Song? Eight-headed is the lord of the land, with seven mouths to devour malevolence. Through pulses of earth doth base nature's flow, as he awaits the time of awakening. Four Empyreans may tear him asunder, but so long as there is one receptive to divine power, Therians shall be forever reborn in sight of the full crimson moon. The nameless Empyrean hath one heart, the nameless Empyrean hath one body. Therians? Essentially, this ancient text you found is an annotated volume of drawings and songs pertaining to Enomiot. Annotated? Then hurry up and just tell us what it means. I'm sorry. So far we've only figured out how to read the song lyrics. All right. I take it we're still in for a good long wait before it's thoroughly decrypted. Likely so, but if we want to find out what the Abbey is up to, we need to know what's in this book, no matter how long it takes. Hmm. What the Abbey's up to, is it? I think we can learn much, even from the lyrics alone. The drawings depict him with eight heads. One of them belongs to his main body. But the other seven are his mouths. Those mouths consume malevolence, sending it along earth pulses back to that main body so he can awaken. The seven monsters fitting that description are called Therians. Right. Now as for this malevolence, I have no idea what that means. Hmm. What about the second part? I haven't studied much ancient history, but it said this world was created by four Empyreans, Earth, Water, Wind, and Fire. But they also call Enominot an Empyrean. Perhaps a war broke out between Enominot and the other Empyreans that resulted in him being sealed away. But if there is someone to connect with this divine power, the Therians will keep spawning. And just like that, Enominot will be revived. If we assume that Shepard Artorius fits that bill, and that he's trying to reawaken Enominot, everything lines up. Which means our job is to find these Therians and cut off Enominot's heads, so to speak. But where do we even start looking for them? Remember, the song states that the Therians in Enominot's body are connected through Earth pulses. If their job is to feed Enominot, the most effective place to position them would be at the Earth Pulse points. Points? The place is where the power of Earth Pulses is concentrated. Places with that sigil. Hey, remember the barrier that was keeping this bug in the forest? Why is that thing out of its cage? Wait, are you trying to say that thing's a Therian? And yet... It would explain why the Abbey was keeping it locked up. And there was that same barrier at the villa, too. That's right. Do you suppose that was also a Therian? Does that mean the Therians all come in different forms? Should we go to Logres and check? We've just started deciphering the book. I'd hate to lose time on some fool's errand. I'd rather know at least a little more about what's in it before we make a move. Hmm. Something bothering you, Grim? This line. The one about Therians being forever reborn. Uh, I 
I just felt the same thing as I did in Warg Forest. The needle's pointing in the direction of Amenoch's temple, Palamedes. Do I recall hearing that the Abbey took that over? Temples and ritual sites are often built on places thought to be rich in spiritual energy. Could the temple possibly be an Earth Pulse point? There's lots of Earth Pulse points scattered all over the world. If there's only seven Therians, most of them will be empty. It's not like we have any better leads. If there's even a chance, shouldn't we go check it out? Better than sitting around waiting on the book. If nothing else, we'll find out what Lafayette is sensing. Hmm, just a theory, but if you were to kill a Therian... What? Hmm, I guess there's only one way to find out. Never mind. Good luck out there. the Palamedes hmm. so I'd have to go right then okay so not that way but instead this way and see whatever awaits me going ahead. Who are you? The innkeeper's daughter. I just... I happened to overhear you all talking about going to Palamedes and... Did you report us to the Abbey? Report? But you already have an exorcist with you. If you have any business, talk with her then. It looks like you're up, kid. I... I'm Eleanor Hume, an exorcist with the Abbey. How might I be of service? I want you to look for someone. A mother and her child went to visit the Abbey grounds, but they haven't returned. They've both gone missing? Yes. The mother's name is Mahina. She's a priestess of Amenoch. And her little daughter's name is Kamoana. Hold on. If she's a priestess of Amenoch... Right. Ever since the Abbey booted her out from the temple, she's been regularly going back to make her objections heard. But one day, she never returned home. And now her daughter has disappeared too. I can only assume that she went to go look for her mother. And you believe they're being held at the temple? Oh no, ma'am. I just... I just can't imagine Mahina would abandon her daughter like that. Kamoana is next in line to succeed her, so... She's had a strict upbringing, but her mother truly loves her. Please forgive Mahina for her protests. I was just hoping you could use the Abbey's resources to track them down. I will do everything in my power to find them. <sighs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Like Kamoana, I grew up with only my mother as family. I can't help but worry for them. Of course. Let's be off, Miss Exorcist. Eleanor, what's your game here? The mother and daughter, you mean? That's on me. I'll search for them myself. I don't care about that. Well, what then? Why are you actively helping us decipher the book? 
when we're using it to thwart the Abbey's plans. Do you think I might be deliberately misleading you? Laying a trap of some sort for you all? Are you? I think you're a lot of things, Demon. But Foolish is not one of them. <laughs> I want to know the truth. I want to know what Lord Artorius is trying to accomplish. And there's something happening in the world right now. I want to know what it is. Unfortunately, little old Eleanor has never been deemed trustworthy enough to be given such information. So, my only option is to find out for myself. You've got the soul searching done, at least. The Abbey and your band of rogues follow two different paths. But something tells me either will lead me to the same destination. And so you don't see any need to lie to us? Exactly. And what'll you do if those truths don't line up cleanly with what you believe? I'm not sure yet. Hmm. As honest an answer as any. Either way, it looks like you'll be working with us for the near future. Yes, for now. Hey, could I ask you something? What is it? About the Therians. I've heard you call yourself a Therian before. Is there any particular insight you have about them? No, none. Artorius said I was one, that's all. And that doesn't bother you? Does it bother you? Nope, not at all. If you're not worried, then neither am I. I'm surrounded by freaks. But, was that truly the reason Ceres chose me? It's actually really hard to tell what's like what I can walk on and what I can't walk on. I'm still loving this game though. You better be ready. This thing is fucking huge. Though. Why are you running from me? Are we ready for this? It's weak to earth, and I got the right people in there. Water. I don't think nobody here does water exactly.
immune to arts. And I have poison on me. Everything else hits for one. Okay. And there's a red sage here, nice. Man, they look like they got wrecked. What's this? <laughs> a demon! The demon we heard about? Sounds like it's having fun. Then we'll use this distraction. Yeah, while you're there, beating up people, I'm just gonna go through here. Wow, look outside! It's the ocean! This was a place of worship for Amenoch, the Water Empyrean. The ancients built this sanctuary underwater for the same reason that Eumacia's temples were built underground. But building this underwater couldn't have been easy. Aye. With the Earth temples, all they had to do was keep digging. Here, they had water to contend with. How did they do it? You can't split the sea like you can a log. They started by stacking giant stone blocks in the shallows, creating an enclosed space. Then they drained the water and expanded the enclosure. Once they had done that enough times and secured enough dry space, they were able to dig into the sea floor. It's mind-boggling, isn't it? The humans believed that by going through such great hardships to build these temples, they could show the depth of their devotion. Additionally, current research suggests the site of this temple once sat on the seacoast. What? Are you saying I'm wrong? No, I'm only reporting what I've read in academic journals. How would coastal ruins sink into the ocean? 
When the Empyreans began their slumber, the land shifted, and this temple was swallowed by the sea. Scholars were able to prove that the sand and the heavy stones formed an airtight seal around the structure. Later, people carved an undersea tunnel to connect to the temple, bringing it to its current state. Now that you mention it, I think I read that book too. Revised theories on ancient architecture, right? That's the one. Have you read it, Aizen? No, I only read the first edition. The problem with the stone enclosure theory is that each time you expand the enclosure, the innermost stones have to be carried out. Once that was pointed out as being too inefficient, alternate theories were developed. The revised edition has a number of competing theories. I highly recommend reading it. Uh, I will then. So, wait, was that a complete rebuttal of Aizen's explanation? Th that was not my intention. Ah, it's okay. Archaeology is a continuous process of asking new questions and making new discoveries. Prevailing theories change all the time. What's it matter anyway? Let's just get going. Who are the Empyreans? There's no Empyrean here, right, Aizen? If you're worried about it, why not flip that coin of his? Heads, no Empyrean. Tails, Empyrean Central. But it always comes up tails! Like I said before, these temples are nothing more than places of worship built by human hands. The current religion started when humans, fearful of natural forces, began to worship four gods they called the Empyreans. If you're concerned about whether or not one is sleeping in these ruins, just remember that their very existence is only legend. Be that as it may, Enominat certainly exists. Aye. But I've never heard a single story of anyone actually seeing an Empyrean. Enominat must be a special case, then. Must be. I suppose so. If there were four more like him, and they were all trying to stop us, we'd be sunk. I can't disagree. Well, it wiped out the security for us, but... Well, look at that. Wolfie's got the crest of Amenoch, the same pendant worn by priestesses. Oh, no. Then that makes this demon... Yeah, she must be the missing mother, Mahina. Come on, then. We can only resist this to blunt, or blunt attacks. Don't just stand there. It's gonna eat you. I know that. But... Her village would become a demon. Eleanor? She's never going to be the same again. This is the least I can do for her. So says Reason. Huh? That feeling. <laughs> Damn! Ugh. <sighs> 
Let the demon be. We don't need it. I think this was this was the room that was this is the room that I went into when I was stuck behind that waterfall there. Uh, I could be wrong. So it seems like I gotta I can just tell from here I need to go into these two separate rooms here and get and get a water orb from each room. That demon. I guess she caught demon blight when she was looking for her daughter. Yeah, that's what the girl at the inn said. But even after turning into a demon, she's still searching for her daughter. Well, Rokuro, Koragane, and Dial all remember what they wanted when they were human, right? Demon or not, she's a mother. It's no surprise she would still be protective of her child. It could be that, or it could be something else. Well, I hope that's what it is. I know that must be how she felt as a human, but demons don't have a sense of motherhood or any such thing. You saw how violent she was. She's not Mahina anymore. When she became a demon, she lost all capacity for empathy and love. It's heartbreaking, but it's the truth. Velvet and Rokuro still have empathy. One demon left unchecked could take a hundred lives. And this one's even willing to attack exorcists. Demons can wipe out entire villages, even cities, just as they destroyed my village. Uh. Thus, my path is clear. Eleanor is right. There's no turning back once you've changed. Perhaps it would be a mercy to grant her peace through death. Uh. Excuse me, I'm just gonna go over here, watch this skit. <laughs> is Inomi not really an Empyrean? What makes you ask that all of a sudden? Well, according to the song Grimm deciphered, Inominat is an eight-headed dragon, right? The Empyreans are supposed to be these holy beings, but using Therians to feed on malevolence sounds more sinister than divine to me. You've got a point there. Empyreans are a type of Malachim, and that doesn't seem like any Malak we've seen. And even less so when we're talking an eight-headed dragon. Is it so far-fetched? What do you think will happen if the Therians come together in one place? Well, it wouldn't be good. My guess is they'd merge together into a giant, horrific monster. The mighty beast will attack us with its eight long, snake-like necks and eight heads spitting hellfire! Uh. I can see your worry. Right? And that's eight heads with only six of us to take them on. It'd be more than we could handle. I'd have to conjure up a double or two. You can do that? Of course not. Then why mention it? Oh! What is it, Luffy said? Do you think each head would act of its own free will? Because if they do, they'd be uncoordinated, bumping into each other and going this way and that, giving us an opening. If we fight as one united whole, I know we can win. Yes! If we work hand in hand, victory is ours. Right, everyone? Huh? Us? United? Have you looked at us recently? Uh... Well, I mean, maybe... Excuse me, sir. I just wish to walk through here in peace. I'll finish this. You really do have a peculiar air about you. Yeah, I don't think you're one to talk.
Open. Is there some sort of trick to it? Well, you could always try busting through it, but I wouldn't. Who knows what sort of traps you might trigger? I know, I know. Look at that diamond-shaped stone in the door. Haven't we seen that somewhere else? You're right. It was on the pedestal with that chalice. That huge thing? You must have some sharp eyes there. I was more interested in what was inside that chalice. So, what? That chalice is the key? Somehow I doubt it'll be that simple. Some stones are colored, and some aren't. It must hold some kind of significance. I think you're right. Take a look at this. Well, well. I got everything there. Now onto the Norman Islands. Scout ships. I have all the diamonds. No, I have, I'm missing one diamond. And I might know where that diamond is. But I might need to go back this way. Excuse me. Hey, oh, would you look at that? Something waiting to get set on fire. like we were right. Another Therian. Just as Velvet conjectured, each of the seven heads seems to assume a different form. <laughs> the sensation! It was here! Well, look at that. I guess your hunt panned out too, kiddo. This is just how I felt in Ward Forest. That must have been an Earth Pulse point back there too. What are we going to do with this one? Can we get it to shrink like that bug of yours? I don't care whether it lives or dies. 
As long as we defeat it and take out one of Inominat's heads, that's all that matters. Try not to let it eat you. That'd be very uncomfortable. No shit! No shit! Take that! Go for it! I'm a crusher! Crusher! I'm a 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 crusher! I don't think this Therian's getting any smaller. <laughs> the demon again! See you later, Brandon.
Therian eating the demon? Must refer to demons then. Feeding on demons. I know what that's like. really get off on this sacrifice stuff, don't they? I can't believe it. That... that woman... She was trying to save her own daughter. <laughs> Mommy! <laughs> Mommy! I miss you. <laughs> Mommy! <laughs> Dying, unable to save her daughter. All she could do was offer herself to feed her hungry child. No, this... this is my fault! So, should we bring her with us? Someone like her will only slow us down. That Therian isn't going anywhere! Oscar! What is the Abbey doing? Please tell me, I have to know! Eleanor, the less you know, the better. I must know! I killed her mother, and then the poor girl, she... Ah, so she must have devoured the demon. But don't let that trouble you. The demon was a necessary sacrifice to bring an end to this world's pain and suffering. It wasn't just some demon! She was a mother! She was all this girl had! Her one and only mother. Be that as it may, those who possess strong wings must... <laughs> it's not nice to make a girl cry. <laughs> Kamawana. It's now or never. Out of the way, Lafayette. Wait! Have you no compassion? This isn't up for discussion. I thought you just wanted to weaken Inominat! You can sever the link! You don't have to kill her! <laughs> had a change of heart. Apparently, a woman's tears truly do have frightening power. I'm just curious about something Grimoire said. I can always kill this one later. If we're taking her with us, we'd better grab her and go. No sense lingering in the enemy's territory. Hey, Kamawana. 
My name's Lafayette. Do you want to come with me and my friends and get out of here? Where's my mommy? I'll be lonely without her. <laughs> You're not alone, sweetie. I promise. Even if she's far away, your mother will always be looking over you. How do you know? Because <laughs> that's what my mother does for me too. Let's go, Kamawana. Okay. Take a look at this. Well, well. This recipe looks real tasty. Scout ship. I think I'm gonna go, I'm gonna head back to the city, then I will cut my stream then. Not good. The malevolence is getting stronger. I my, the effects are already starting to show. Holy shit. Alright. Here goes nothing. What's up? Did you come to share something else you found in that book? Not quite. I'm afraid the malevolence has grown too dense for me to hole up at the inn reading. Malevolence? <laughs> the hell? What's that coming out of their bodies? Malevolence. They're all hitting their limits. Demon Blight! Even the Inn Girl! Why is this happening? They're demons now. Their malevolence is spilling over. The malevolence. All of that energy spilling from their bodies. That's what causes the demon blight? Do you know what demon blight really is? What demons are? They couldn't have gotten far. Track them down at all costs. 
We'll talk later. The exorcists are going to have their hands full with these demons. Let's get back to the ship while we can. But she mastered the floor spear, so I'll put her mantle ass back on. <laughs> already went up. Okay. Oh. 
I broke here. Where's my mom? Come, Alana. Your mother is still far away. Then I need to wait for her at home. Let's go back to Haria. Scary demons are running through the village. It's too dangerous there now. But I want to see my mom. Your mom would be sad if you got hurt by a demon. Come with us, and we'll keep you safe until she comes back. Okay. I'll go with you. I wouldn't want mom to be sad. All right. You're going to tell me about the demon blight and malevolence. Are you seriously thinking of breaking the Moloch taboo? That depends. Moloch taboo? This is about more than just the demons. You could say it's the truth behind how this world really works. The knowledge can be devastating to humans, throwing into question everything they think they know. And so the Malachim agreed to withhold it from humans. For their own protection. Do 
You still want to know? It's not like I'm a human anymore. I can't keep lying to myself. I can't go on unless I know the truth. You asked for it. First of all, this thing, this illness you call Demon Blight does not exist. Any human carries the potential of becoming a demon. All it takes is for the malevolence lurking in their heart to overflow. And what exactly is this malevolence? Impure emotions beyond what reason can suppress. Think of it as the sin buried in men's souls. So you knew. I'm a witch. So malevolence is the darkness in all our hearts. Make any sense to you guys? Any at all? When you put it like that, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> By nature, humans are incited by negative energy. It is easy to turn them towards impurity, creating malevolence. In fact, most people are constantly generating malevolence. It might even be possible that demons are people's true selves, and what little reason they possess is all that keeps them in human form. If the masses realize this, the realm would be thrown into utter chaos. That's why the Abbey propagates the lie of demon blight. So I presume. That can't be true! You know yourselves there weren't any demons before the opening! It used to be that humans couldn't see demons, or Malachim. Not unless they possessed a unique spiritual talent we call resonance. All your average human would see was someone turning extremely violent. Unable to explain what was happening, they'd just call those people possessed or feral. Then what made people see them all of a sudden? I don't know. My guess would be that something triggered greater resonance among all of humanity. And then, on the day of the advent, all humans gained the ability to perceive Malachim. And in the following days, the exorcist numbers swelled. This has to be Artorius's doing. But if there's no sickness, why would an entire village turn into demons at the same time? Eight-headed is the lord of the land with seven mouths to devour malevolence. Humans produce malevolence, which Therians consume and transmit to a Nominat. But when we removed Kamawana from the Earth Pulse point... Clever boy. That's right. With no Therian to absorb their malevolence, the villagers could no longer contain it. So you're saying it's all my fault? Hey, what's going on? You all look so sad. It's scaring me. On the other hand, at least now we know we can trust the contents of that ancient book. We tear the Therians away from their Earth Pulse points. Inominat's power will wane, and will prevent this awakening. But if we take away the Therians, then more and more humans will turn into demons. It's the only way to kill Artorius. Ooh, the knives come out. So even the truth won't stop you. Very well. Since each Therian looks different, we'll only find them by capturing the Earth Pulse points one by one. What separates humans and demons? Um... Uh... That's Eleanor. Ch cheer up, Eleanor. Your mommy's looking over you too, you know. Yeah, so 
she is. Thank you, Kamalana. Grimoire, I want you to tell me more about what you said earlier. About malevolence? I told you, the subject is taboo. I understand that human emotions create a poison called malevolence that turns people into demons. Is there no way to stop malevolence from being created? As long as humans remain human, no. Malevolence is born of emotion, you see. But your kind must have found a way around it. Malakim experience emotions too. But Malakim do not produce malevolence, unlike humans. That's a lie. I've watched a Malak turn into a demon. That only happens when we are exposed to too much external malevolence. <laughs> True. The island was full of prisoners and demons. And Melchior hit that Malak with something that turned it into a wyvern. Was it malevolence? To Malakim, malevolence is a powerful toxin. We seek those of purity to serve as vessels to protect us from it. It is not a perfect solution, however. If the vessel is corrupted, the Moloch is as well. That is correct. So if Eleanor turns into a demon, then Lafayette, that must be what Eisen meant when he said he'd hate to see Lafayette's vessel broken. A small crack in one's soul is often all it takes to break a person apart. So try not to pick on our squeaky clean exorcist too much, hmm? Thanks for the warning. So I rescued this poacher who'd run away from one of those class 4 islands, right? She mentioned something about being hired by some chef to go hunt a rare wolf on the island. But she didn't see a single blasted critter on that island, let alone any rare wolf. Place was empty. Then why did she run away? Even though she never saw nothing, she kept hearing some beast howling round the island. Freaked her right out, I tell ya. When she got back to her boat, her food had been pilfered, and her ship was scratched up to hell. She got out of there as quick as she could, but her ship sunk as soon as she hit open water. Hmm. Sounds like whatever's there is as smart and manipulative as it is vicious. Sounds like. Later I heard some talk about how several exorcists had gotten killed on that island. If you plan on going, you'd best be very cautious. Now that is going to do it for me. I appreciate everybody watching. I will see you guys next time.